Hi guys, it's me again. I want to finish up our multiple alleles lecture with how do you figure out which ones are the most dominant, which ones are the least dominant, or which ones are totally recessive, when there's more than two alleles. It was very clear cut for the blood group antigens that we talked about, the blood types, the ABO, because both A and B were co-dominant. But what if they weren't? What if A was more dominant to B, which is more dominant to O, or the little i? So let's talk about those situations where there aren't just three alleles, four alleles, five alleles, and we don't have them easily taken care of by codominance. What if each one has a dominance to another and then, right, there's always going to be one that's the big loser, right? The big loser or the double recessive for the blood group antigens is little i, little i. And for all of the other alleles, somebody, right, some genotype has to be that guy. Okay, so the example for this text is ducks. Could be any type of animal as long as we're talking about more than two alleles. In this case, we're discussing three alleles, okay, and we're trying to figure out which ones are more dominant, okay, which one's the recessive. Now, they're listing here what the genotypes are, but in a lot of cases, you won't know what the genotypes are. You'll just be given phenotypes and the offspring that are produced, and you need to figure out what their genotypes are and the dominance relationships amongst all of the alleles. So let's just walk through this example knowing everything up front so we can understand how we can come up with those answers. And so again, we're not going to call this P or F1 because to us, parentals always homozygous one and homozygous the other. In this case, it's obvious from this, that is not homozygous, and neither is that one. So we're just going to call this a cross, okay? And we're, the phenotype is restricted. That's just what it looks like, okay? So restricted is like what the females look like. That's, you know, if you know anything about ducks. And if you don't know anything about ducks, then you should go out to the pond and check out those ducks because we have lots of mallard ducks out in our pond. So go check them out. So restricted looks like the females. Mallard is the classic green head. And then you can see there's also another phenotype called dusky, right, that pops out as well. <clears throat> okay. So in this case, if we were just looking at the phenotypes, right, we would say, uh-oh, this looks like a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. Hmm, what did I tell you about 1 to 2 to 1 ratios? It's always co-dominance or incomplete dominance. But in this case, you'll also be given information about uh, true breeding and what comes out. So remember, this isn't the 1 to 2 to 1 between a parental cross, the F1 going to the F2. Remember, the 1 to 2 to 1 is always in the F2. This is not an F2, so don't get freaked out about that. Okay. So we know restricted in this case is M with a capital R. So again, if you're already told that, you can guess the R is going to be um, dominant. A little M with a little D, hmm, suspicious. M and then a little M with a little D. So already, if you're just given this genotype for this mallard, what can you say about the M, the capital M allele, and the little MD allele? This guy looks mallard, which means what? This one is the dominant allele over the D allele, which is now we know is dusky, right? So if we come down here, little d, little d gives us dusky. So just by being given genotype and phenotype of this duck, we know which one's dominant. At least big M is dominant over MD. What about this one? MR times with M little m little d, right? We know that the big MR is dominant over the little MD because this guy looks restricted. What would it look like if the little m little d were dominant? not restricted, it would look dusky, right, if that guy were dominant. Okay, so if we do this cross, and we actually do the Punnett squares, which again, this is to help us understand, we're going to put big M R here, 
little m, little d, m, so our mallard guy's on this side, and we're going to just over and down, just like we would do a normal Punnett square, right? And so these are the genotypes that come out, right? And so this one is dusky, we were told. And then we're told another one-fourth is mallard, okay? And so that could be either this one or this one, right? We don't know anything about what this guy looks like, but we already know what this one looks like because of the parent. So we know this one has to be the one-fourth mallard. That was something given in the equation, Right? One-fourth dusky and one-fourth mallard. We were told that's what we found. So what does that mean in this one here? It can't be mallard, right? Because we were told half of them are restricted. So that one has to be restricted and this one has to be restricted. Because we're told that, right? This is the data. This is what came out of the cross. You can't argue with that. That's just what you were given. So what does that mean here? If this looks restricted, which one's more dominant? The plain M mallard or the restricted? Well, it has to be restricted. That's what it looks like, right? Whatever shows up, that means the M, capital M mallard, has to be recessive to or less dominant than the capital M, capital R. This one right here tells us too, right? This one looks restricted, so has to be dominant over that, okay? So what do we know? We know that everything, both of them, are dominant over little d, right? And this is just the greater than sign, right, that we used to use when we were in grade school, Okay, so this is less than, right, on this side of it, right here. That guy, the double recessive, the dusky, the big loser, right, kind of like that guy. Okay, and then what goes in the middle? Which one's next? Which one is, we know both M and MR are dominant over this guy, but which one is dominant between M and MR? Hmm, where is your answer for that? Yep, sports fans, there it is. You figured it out. That guy right there tells you that capital MR is the most dominant because it's dominant over M, which we know is dominant over little m little d. Okay? Because, why you say? Why you say that? Because these have to be half. This is this half that are restricted. We know down here this one has to be the one-fourth mallard because we know up right here you know that genotype's mallard. Has to be. This one, we know that has to be dusky because it can't be any of these things. We know all of those guys are something else, right? The restricted guy, we know this one's restricted, okay? And if this one's dusky, because it's homozygous, it can't be anything else, then this guy must also be restricted. So if this one's restricted, it looks like this allele, this one must be recessive to it. That's how we get this dominant series. So that would be the dominant series. This guy's dominant to this guy, which is dominant to that guy, the big loser. It's really how you work through these. So we always list the alleles in most dominant to most recessive, okay? And we use these greater than, right? This would be the big loser, and this is the winner. It's not, I'm just kidding. Recessive traits are not losers. Don't get, don't get crazy, right? Dominance relationships between multiple alleles. Crosses between true breeding lines allow these arrangements. So we might need to actually do more crosses than just what we showed you. That's if you're set up with a specific that's going to really tell you all of 
the dominant series. Sometimes you have to do more than one cross, right? We might have to go, if we did this guy true breeding times this guy true breeding, right? This is restricted times dusky. What's restricted times dusky give you? What are the offspring? You should not need to do a Punnett square. All the offspring are going to look restricted, right? So that automatically tells you this one's dominant over mallard. What about this one? M over this guy. What do we get? All mallard. Mallard is dominant over dusky. Okay. What about... What else do we have? Uh -huh -huh. What if we do this? Yes, yes. I like what you've done here. Uh -huh. Yes. What about this? All of these guys are going to end up looking like this. This phenotype is what tells you who's dominant. And in this case of this example we just did on the other slide, these all look restricted. That allows you <coughs> excuse me, to set up your dominant series. Okay, So in a lot of cases you're going to have to do these yourself. All of the true breeding crosses you have to be told something. You have to be told either genotypes or phenotypes in order to figure this out. Okay. So for example, right, here's your alleles, and then they'll give you genotypes and phenotypes, and then you have to figure out the dominant series, right? So if this is a table that you were given, again, right, that tells you which one's dominant, that tells you which one's dominant, that tells you which one's dominant. That tells you double recessive. Okay? Just a hierarchical relationship between various alleles of a single gene. What? Okay. <coughs> so again, here's just that same setup. If you want to go through it, again, how we got to these answers. You can use this slide to redraw them out and make sure you understand it well. And then please work on this. I'm going to set up a homework, right? iPad ass homework. What is it? 7.4. Okay, on today's, what is today? The 15th. Okay. So what would you get if M were dominant over MR? What? Hmm? Right, so that means we're crossing this out. We're crossing this out. Okay, remember genotypes don't change. The cross is the cross. Okay, so this guy stays the same. This guy stays the same. What do we get in, in this one? What are, we'll cross out this line because it may not be true anymore. Right? What are the phenotypes of these guys? And then, right, based on that being the dominant series. So again, you should be able to be told the dominant series, figure out the offspring, or given the offspring, figure out the dominant series. So try this one, screenshot and upload. And we will talk about this on Wednesday. Please do this tonight or tomorrow. And then everybody will be very, very happy. Okay, thanks for listening, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, stop it. Just stop it. It's not so bad.